The full impact of Brexit is currently not yet visible to everyone and not at its full extent. As macabre as it, it might sound, the British government is lucky in the case of Brexit that the pandemic exists. Therefore, many of the effects of Brexit can currently still be blamed on the pandemic and are not always visible to the population. But in some places, the smokescreen doesn't necessarily work. A year after Brexit, German exports to Great Britain are falling again. In 2021, goods worth 65.4 billion euros went to the UK and thus another 2.5% less than in the previous year, as the German Statistical Office announced on Friday based on preliminary calculations. In the corona recession year 2020, exports had already collapsed by 15.3%. In the ranking of Germany's most important trading partners, the United Kingdom fell from 5th place in 2020 for exports to 8th place for 2021 and slipped from 11th place for imports to the 13th place. These figures for 2021 apply to the period January to November. And the most important commodities in German exports to Great Britain in the first 11 months were motor vehicles and parts worth 14 billion euros, that's minus 2.1% compared to the same period last year. On the import side, the main commodities traded from the UK were metals, valued at 4 billion euros. Because of the strong price increases, these imports increased by 84%. The exit from the European Union also dampened trade between the EU and Great Britain, as the Munich-based IFO Institute explained. The British share of EU goods Exports fell from 6.2% in 2019 to 5.2% in 2021. At the same time, the share of EU goods imports fell from 39 to 2.6%. The researchers, as I said, once again looked at the data for January to November. Another part of the negative effects on economic, uh, economic output and trade already took place before the exit in 2020, said Lisandra Flach, head of the EFO Center for Foreign Trade. The reasons were that uncertainty for companies increased and companies already adapted to the new environment after the 2016 referendum. And according to the EFO, the trade and cooperation agreement after Brexit was able to avoid higher tariffs. However, there are now test certificates or other documents and requirements that make crossing the border more time-consuming and complicated and thus cause higher trading costs. These new barriers are devastating for EU and UK businesses and particularly for small and medium-sized enterprises. Formally, the UK left the EU on January 31st in 2020, but a transitional phase with largely the same rules as before applied until the turn of the year 2020-2021. A good year ago, the island finally broke with the rest of the continent. Another part of the negative consequences took place before the exit in 2020. Companies were unsettled and had adapted to the new environment after the Brexit referendum already. And that's an important point here. So we can't always compare the numbers from 2020 to now. The trade and cooperation agreement did avoid higher tariffs, but all the complications we have now, people were preparing for this. And in the case of Northern Ireland, on the other hand, the British government is trying simultaneously to appease its clientele and to obscure the benefits of the so-called Northern Ireland Protocol to Northern Ireland by vocally opposing this protocol, which they themselves negotiated and signed. Indeed, Northern Ireland benefits from its unique position. On the one hand, it's part of the UK internal market. On the other hand, it's still part of the EU internal market for goods because of the Northern Ireland Protocol. And with that, businesses in Northern Ireland can enjoy the best of both worlds, so to speak. And as a result, many businesses in Northern Ireland are currently doing much better than their colleagues in the rest of the UK. Of course, this must not become too visible because it would take ad absurdum precisely the grandiose promises made by the Leave campaign that the United Kingdom will be much better off outside the EU after Brexit than before. 
And that's why the negotiations over the next few weeks will be very interesting again, since both sides have now brought an yeah, invisible deadline in February into play in their statements. The moment of truth is near. With which Prime Minister, of course, remains to be seen. It's not guaranteed whether he will still be called Boris Johnson. And when the pandemic is over, the real fun for the government will begin. Except someone gets the idea for early general elections. That would be funny, because in that case, Labour will probably have to deal with the then visual Brexit consequences and the anger of the population. That would be a quite vicious plan from the current government if that were to happen. And I'll see you in my next video. Bis gleich.